so this is our project AM modulation and demodulation so we first constructed the circuit on a breadboard for test purposes we have uh, divided the whole circuit into uh, three parts for ease of understanding the first board here contains the oscillator in which we used a Kolpich oscillator to generate the uh, carrier frequency uh, the second board contains the modulator on the left side and the demodulator on the right uh, so uh, and the third board contains the uh, low pass filters and amplifiers uh, to find out from where we finally received the obtained uh, received message signal, message signal. so first we're going to, uh, we're going to check our oscillator which we use to generate our carrier frequency for that we have used a PCC of uh, 12 volts uh, so we take our output from the oscillator through this probe and check it on the oscilloscope so here is our carrier frequency so uh, it's for approximately 4 volt peak to peak and uh, frequency of around 800 kilohertz to 900 kilohertz and if we zoom in uh, we see that there is a slight distortion in the lower portion of the sine wave it's not actual uh, full sine sine wave but the error is the error can be neglected since we only are gonna use the envelope to detect our message so this is our modulator circuit uh, in modulator circuit we have to give two inputs first we give the we take the carrier frequency from the oscillator and take it in the modulator and uh, we give the, uh, the message signal uh, we get from the signal generator we use here uh, we use a frequency of 800 kilohertz sine wave as the message, message signal so when we see the output of the modulator we are supposed to get a modulated wave so if you see the oscillator so this is our message signal in channel 1 uh, which is of 800 hertz and if you switch to the output of the modulator we get the modulated wave and uh, now if we uh, see both of the waves in dual mode we see that we almost get a perfect envelope of the message signal uh, the message signal almost coincides with the envelope but there's a slight phase difference because uh, we have used many capacitors and inductors in the circuit which are frequency dependent components now if we change the uh, sine wave uh, sine wave mass signal to a uh, triangle uh, we see that we get almost perfect envelope and almost also for the square wave we get uh, almost perfect envelope now, if we switch to the modulated wave we see, see that uh, we, if we zoom in, we see that this is actually the carrier frequency which has just formed an envelope of the message signal. So this is our demodulator circuit. We use a tire detector in a demodulator circuit to demodulate, to demodulate the uh, received uh, AM signal. Uh, uh, the amplitude of the demodulated wave after the tire detector is very small. Uh, we cannot observe the uh, wave shape there so we have used a amplifier uh, using a using an op amp so after using an amplifier we see the output here so this is our this, this was our original message signal and this is the received AM, uh, wave after amplification and uh, if you watch it in dual mode uh, this is what we get so the clear one here is the message signal and the slightly distorted one uh, uh, is the received AM wave after demodulation and amplification so we see that there is almost a 180 degree phase shift uh, between the message signal and the received message signal but uh, in case of transmission of message the phase shift doesn't matter much all that matters is the wave shift so that we can retrieve the data so if we uh, use different types of message signals this is now sine wave now if we give a triangle wave we see that we also get the or young, almost the original mass signal with some distortion and uh, for square wave uh, we get quite good mass, mass signal but with much distortion so after we uh, demodulated the received mass signal uh, using a dye detector we amplified it uh, to increase the amplitude since during transmission the amplitude Became small. Then uh, we uh, there was very small uh, noise signal, noise in the message signal. So we passed it through a low pass filter here. The low pass filter filtered out the high frequency noises, and thus uh, finally we were supposed to get a clean message signal. So in the oscilloscope we see uh, 
this is our message signal, original message signal that we transmitted. And after filtering the demodulated wave, uh, this is what we get. As we can see, this uh, almost no noise is present. It's a very smooth sine wave. Now, if we see uh, both the message signal uh, transmitted and the received one, uh, we see that uh, they match, but there's almost a one-degree phase shift here uh, that happens due to the different components we used in our circuit. So as we see that uh, the master signal is almost uh, fully received with a slight decrease in amplitude uh, that can be uh, fixed later using using amplifier. So this is our oscillator. We have used a copy oscillator here, and as we see the output of the oscillator, uh, we see that we get a carrier wave. So if we zoom in, so we see that it's a current carrier wave. Uh, it has approximately got a five volt peak to peak amplitude. So this is our modulator. Uh, we have taken the output of the, of the modulator, and as we see it in the oscill uh, oscilloscope, uh, we see that we see our modulator signal. Uh, which is right at uh, this, as you can see the envelope of the massive signal. Yeah, so this is for uh, if our massive signal is triangular, then we see that the envelope is correct triangular. And if it's square, then it also becomes square. And for sine, uh, it is a sine envelope. Frequency. So if you vary the frequency, we see that the envelope frequency also changes as we increase the frequency and if we decrease the frequency you see that the frequency decreases here amplitude 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 and so and uh, if we increase or decrease the amplitude of the mass signal Oh, it's there.